One of the simplest geometrical transformations or mappings of a plane is a central similarity transformation, sometimes also called a central dilatation. Given a geometrical figure in a plane and a point, we join this point, which we call the center of dilatation, to a point of the figure, and along the resulting ray, we dilate or contract the segment bounded by the center and the point of the figure in a fixed ratio. As the point P moves around the given figure, the point P prime describes a figure similar to the original figure. If the original figure and the image figure are on the same side of the center, we say that the similarity ratio is positive, but it is also possible to plot the image figure so that the center separates it from the original figure. We then say that the similarity ratio is negative. If the original figure is a line, the image figure is a parallel line. Circles are mapped on circles, ellipses on similar and similarly placed ellipses. Triangles become similar triangles. And we note that if we are given any two triangles with parallel sides, we can find a center of dilatation from which one can be transformed into the other. This center is the point through which the joins of corresponding vertices all pass. This point may be at infinity, in which case one triangle is mapped on the other by a translation. We know how to inscribe a circle in a given triangle. How can we inscribe an ellipse? Let us begin by supposing that we do have an ellipse situated somewhere in the plane of the given triangle. We circumscribe a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime about this given ellipse with its sides respectively parallel to those of the given triangle ABC. This can be done in two distinct ways. We choose our triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime, so that the joins of corresponding vertices are concurrent in a finite point. This point can then be used as a center of a central similarity transformation, which maps A prime, B prime, C prime onto ABC. What happens to the ellipse inscribed in triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? It is mapped on an ellipse which touches the sides of triangle ABC. And in fact, points of contact are mapped on two points of contact. The inscribed ellipse has the same shape or ratio of major to minor axis as the given one. Is there any connection between the shape of the inscribed ellipse and the possible points of contact with the sides of the given triangle? A circle inscribed in the triangle will touch at the midpoints of the sides of the triangle only if the triangle is equilateral. Is it possible to construct an ellipse which will touch the sides of a given triangle at the midpoints? To analyze this problem, let us imagine that there is such an ellipse touching the sides of the given triangle at their midpoints. The medians of the triangle pass through its centroid G, which divides each median in the ratio 2 to 1. Hence, a similarity transformation with center G and negative constant of similarity will map XYZ onto ABC and the inscribed ellipse onto an ellipse which passes through the vertices of triangle ABC. We note that the tangents to this ellipse at A, B, and C will be respectively parallel to the opposite sides of the given triangle, since tangents map into parallel tangents. Conversely, if we can construct an ellipse through A, B, and C, which has tangents at these points parallel to the opposite sides, B, C, C, A, and A, B, 
A dilatation with center G will map this ellipse onto one which touches the sides of the triangle at the midpoints. It is this second problem, equivalent to the first, which we now investigate. From our point of view, it is a simpler problem to untangle. An ellipse through A, B, and C, with the tangent at A parallel to B, C, must have its center on the median A, X. This statement is based on the theorem that the midpoints of a system of parallel chords of an ellipse all lie on a diameter, that is, a line passing through the center and the tangents at the ends of this diameter are also parallel to the chords of the system. Hence, the ellipse we wish to construct has its center on AX and also on BY and on CZ. If these three lines did not all pass through one point G, the ellipse we are looking for could not exist. But we now know that if an ellipse does exist, its center is at the centroid of the triangle. Conversely, if there is an ellipse with its center at the centroid in passing through the vertices of the triangle, then the tangents at the vertices are parallel to the opposite sides. Our problem has now been reduced to the possibility of constructing an ellipse with center at the centroid to pass through the vertices of the triangle. Since G is to be the center of such an ellipse, the point A prime, where G A prime equals G A, the point B prime, where G B prime equals G B, and the point C prime, where G C prime equals G C, will also be on the ellipse. If the ellipse does exist, we now have six points which must lie on it. It looks as if there is an ellipse through these six points. But how do we know that it is not a hyperbola, which is also a central conic? The equation of a conic with center at the origin of coordinates may be written in the form px squared plus 2qxy plus ry squared equals 1, and therefore depends on three constants, p, q, and r. If we write down the condition that this conic passed through the point x0, y0, this equation is linear in the unknowns P, Q, and R. Since we can solve three linear equations in three unknowns, we can find P, Q, and R from the condition that the conic with a given center is to pass through three given points. Of course, this conic might still be a hyperbola with the given center. Parabolas have no center. But one of our conditions is that the center is the centroid of the three points on the curve. And it is simple to show that three points on a hyperbola never have their centroid at the center of the hyperbola. Hence, the central conic through the three points A, B, and C with center at G, which we now know exists, must be an ellipse. And our problem is solved. If we so wish, we can construct any further number of points on the ellipse by using Pascal's theorem or some other procedure.